series of videos actually that we're gonna do and that is the explain series yeah we have been getting a lot of requests on how should I put my pair of hands out how do pair of hands work how do I determine at what depth my base be uh, swims when I'm trolling and um, all kinds of stuff actually yeah. in our videos we try to uh, yeah. explain uh, the basics but uh, uh, yeah, usually a video is about that day or that trip. And this series is only about how. We try to visualize it and by doing basic drawing and shit. So that's what we're gonna do. And today we are gonna talk about uh, trolling and in specific about how to get your bait at the right depth. And how do you know that it's swimming at the right depth. And we're gonna see how many times people comment kindergarten drawings. <laughs> Don't bitch at our drawing skills. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 you know, we're okay at fishing, but uh, drawing is not our main uh, specialty. But we give it a go, and hopefully, we can visualize how stuff works and how we do it. And uh, yeah, so that being said, let's go. I mean, let's dive into and explain how do we set out our baits to get at the right depth. Let me state at first that it's not an exact science. No, you're just going after some some depth. Like now in winter, fish are deep, uh, you want to be around uh, uh, as deep as you can go, but not touching the, 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 the lake bed all the time. No. Your travels will get blunt and you will pick up some, uh, some dirt. And it affects the swimming motion as well, so you'll probably be dragging a bait around that doesn't swim anymore. Which, yeah. you know, in winter is horrible because it's cold, it's not the most comfortable time of the year to be out of the water and then you want to maximize your, you know, opportunities to catch a fish actually so th that and also the general rule is it's best to fish rather fish too shallow than too deep yeah true well, maybe we can draw that first I mean if you have like the water layer up here and then you have our, I'll use the black marker shit now we're gonna draw a pike <laughs> 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 okay. You have the bottom, the lake bed with some stuff up yeah, here. I'll, I'll and draw the pike. Drop. Okay, you can draw the pike then. <laughs> yeah. It's over here. Wow. <laughs> That's an evil pike. Seven eye. Ooh. Fin. Oh, yeah. I could have done it better myself. <laughs> yeah. I'll use the red one to draw the lure. This is the first situation. If you fish up here, then the pike has it in his line of sight. Instead, when you're fishing it up like here, it's not impossible to catch a pike like that because lures have rattles and vibrations. But pike is most of the times, uh, yeah, hunts by sight, and they are always looking up. Exactly. Plus, if you fish up high, then more pike will see you because if you have another pike here and you have another pike over there then they can spot the lure that's up high but not the one that is close to the bottom so the higher you fish the more pike will actually see your bait and the more you know the bigger the chance you actually trade one to actually take your lure so that's that's one of the things that i always try to explain the higher you fish it the more pike will eventually see it but there's one clear condition to it you have to have clear water yeah when the water is murky you want to be as close as you can to the pike yeah with your lure exactly I didn't know you were a graffiti artist. Yeah, I'm gonna do my tag on the corner. corner. <laughs> so this is the basics about a situation where you want to adjust to the clarity of the water and also, you know, when it's clear enough, rather fish a bit too high to the surface of the water than to fish too deep. You will catch more fish when you fish a bit more shallow. That's one thing I learned when I started out pike fishing, I was trolling a lot on a canal and I didn't have a depth sound or I didn't have any idea what I was doing and I didn't have any money at all. So I was quite scared to lose any baits. So what I usually did, 
I lifted my rod tip and if the bait goes through the surface when I lifted my rod tip, I knew that I was at a safe depth and then I caught a lot of fish. But then I had a sonar and I earned some more money and then I started to playing around a bit. Well, you know, the canal was like three meters deep. And then I tried to experiment to fish closer to the bottom because it was three meters deep at the canal and then I started fishing at two meters of depth. I started catching less and less fish because I was fishing too deep. Too deep, two meters of depth, and then I was still catching fish, but only the fish that were close to my lure. But when I started fishing shallow again, more fish could notice my bait, and then I started catching more and more fish. I used a lot of shallow baits back in the days because we didn't have any big swim baits like these. Uh, one of the things that really worked for me was the, the balls of bars, balls of bars, uh, and the balls of jerk bait as well, which was a lipless jerk bait, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It was <laughs> the neighbors are having a party. <laughs> it was a the balls of jerk bait was a lip. Wow, wow, balls of jerk bait was a <laughs> the balls of jerk bait. We was a lipless crankbait, and um, it 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 went really really shallow. It looked a bit like a salmon fatso, but then it was floating and it has like silver foil on the side. So you want to have that sunlight reflecting on the entire yeah. time. That thing didn't go deeper than like 50 centimeters or something. Yeah, no matter how far away. Crazy bait, crazy bait, but it ran really high up in that water column, up in the high water column, and then most fish notice it, and, and you know you caught more fish. So rather fish too shallow than too deep. That's one of the first tips. But that being being said, what if you're trolling out and let's say you're using this 37 centimeter line through pike. This is a shallow one, it doesn't go that deep. How would be your tactic to determine how deep you're going? How deep does your lure actually dive? This is a question a lot of people ask. Well, they go to the, to the shop, they take a, a pike off the shelf, they throw it in uh, when they go fishing the first time, and they say, well, how deep is this yeah. thing going? There are a few things uh, you can look at before you uh, ask yourself this question. Well, looking at this pike, it has the, the, the line through system sticking out right in front of its nose. Uh, compared to this trout, which has it up like this. So it will have a little wedge. So it dives, it uses, it uses the body to, to dive a little bit. It pushes the bait down, yeah. Pushes the bait down. Well, this one doesn't have that at all. So, of course, this would be a shallow bait. Yeah. Well, then there's uh, 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 how many weight is packed. I think it's lead weight. In yeah, this I one. think it's still lead. Yeah, the, the, a lot of uh, you know um, uh, brands are replacing the lead with tungsten or other materials that are heavy. But I think it's still lead inside. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a, there's a, usually a, a metal inside, and if it's really really heavy it goes really deep but as you have it in your hands like this you can feel it's not a really particularly heavy bait yeah. compared to uh, this herring shed which has 300 grams of metal right in front of him so you know this one will go straight down when you throw it in that's a way to look at it one thing that also comes into play is um, look at how wide the bait is as well because you can have a heavy bait but is it when it's 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 wider? Like this one is quite narrow, but this one's a bit wider. But sometimes you have baits that are even wider than this one. Uh, I mean, we've had rubber baits that are like this thick. Yeah, forty centimeters round is quite thick. Um, the wider the body is, the more water, the more pressure it generates. Why that creates the effect that it doesn't sink that easily downwards. Um, if it's slim. It has less resistance in the water, it gets deeper. When it's wide, like, uh, well, this one is relatively wide, but you have wider baits than this one on the market. Um, and like I said, it creates resistance and it pushes the water down a bit like this and then it sinks less easier than a sling bait like this herring shell. So there's a couple of factors involved when it comes to the bait itself, yeah. um, but also your setup. I mean, your setup is yeah. important too. Yeah, yeah you fish with... Uh thinner line yeah. than, I, uh, yeah. than I'm fishing with. 
I usually have braid like uh, 80, 80 pounds test. Yeah. I think if we draw it out like this again, so we have to like the water surface and then we have the bottom again. It feels like kindergarten again. Drawing yeah. again. Then we have the bottom again. It's all creative. Let's just say that this is yeah, like 10 meters and this is zero. Fine. Then we have a. Let's say we have a bow. That's an awesome boat. That's an awesome boat. You can spot which model it is, right? And then we have like an engine on it and then the prop. Fine. And then we have a couple of factors. Let's first, you know, first factor that comes up is a line. I think you were mentioning about the line. Wow. Yeah, look yeah. at this. So the thicker the line is, the more resistance it, it, it gets from the water. So, so when we have a line out like uh, like yeah this say this is uh, this is 55 okay Ouch. if you would be fishing with uh, like for instance uh, uh, 65 yeah the line is thicker so it would be higher up there the difference is minimal, but when you're going for depth, sometimes this can just be the little difference it makes to catch a bike. And then there's of course the distance, because say you would be fishing with the 55 and you would throw it 20 meters behind the boat, you get the depth, you get the depth right here. Yeah, let's say that's two meters. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you would be fishing with the, what were we saying, 65, yeah. and you would give it more weight, then you would get exactly. yeah. the same depth. As we were telling, this is not an exact science. It's just you, uh, you launch your boat, you go fishing, you have an idea where the pikes are. Uh, that's also some kind of tactic because you have several rods when trolling. So you take one lure, that's very deep, one that's halfway in the water and one in the surface. Yeah. And then slowly during the day you'll get a feel about how the pikes are behaving. And of course, you know your water. There's another factor that comes into play as well, because now we mentioned that the thickness of your line, the distance between you and the, and the your lure, the line you put out. But there's another factor that comes into play as well, too actually. But the first one I'm going to mention is speed. When you're trolling, Speed is one of the most important things. I think most people watching this video want to know about the speed. Yeah. Well, speed difference. I mean, when we have a 30 centimeter trout like this one, this runs at, I don't know, two and a half kilometers an hour. Then it starts moving. But when you go slower than that, it's, it suddenly starts moving like this through the water. And when you hit that two and a half kilometers an hour, suddenly it starts to move around like it should do. This one works up to like four or five easily. It keeps on running. This one's yeah. quite stable. And when you go above the, 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 the four, it still runs, but it, it's like it's like a mad dog. It's like this the entire time. And yeah. then it's not something that's really, it could no. work for like sailfish or something. Yeah. Not, for, <laughs> not for pike. Yeah. You want to hit that sweet spot between foot two and a half and four and a half, I think. I mean, uh, yeah. Siegfried, the guy who caught that one with a 38 pike, he trolls quite fast, like we used to do with Lucky Lures, for instance, because some baits require more speed. Yeah. This pike, for example, this one doesn't work at two and a half. This one works badly at three kilometers an hour. This one starts to move really well at 3.5. Yeah. But works up towards five kilometers. Yeah, so you get a lot of a lot of, of, of people saying, well, this bait doesn't work. It's all because of the speed. Exactly. It needs some speed. Yeah. So when you go faster again, it creates the effect that your line will be pushed upwards as well. And then you fish more shallow. So key important thing is the thickness of your line, the distance of your bait behind the boat, the speed of the boat. Yeah. And then also a factor that doesn't come into play that often is also current. When you fish along river, when you go against the current, yeah. the baits will go up. Was up. And when you go with the current, then you have less drag and then it goes downwards. So that's something you need to keep in mind as well. If you all have all these factors into play, what if you put your baits out, you know? Uh, what's, what's, a, what's a trick to know, to get a feel? 
on how deep you actually are. At first you exaggerate, uh, say you want, to, you want to fish shallow, you just throw your lines out and then you stand in the, in the boat and you put your rod tip up and then you can see the bait moving in the surface. And if you want to be close to the bottom, now, like now in winter times, then you just exaggerate and, and, and just give it way more line than it should. Mm -hmm. And then you wait till you touch the bottom yeah. once or twice. And then you just reel it back and you look at the way uh, uh, the line is on your spool and you just memorize. Or, as I'm experimenting with right now, is line counters. Yeah. But I can't say much about it. It has been pretty handy the last time I fished with it, but I'm not that experienced with line counters yet. And if you don't lose a line count, you could also, some people actually, you know, give pulls like this and count the amount of pulls they give. Uh, I do everything based on my gut feeling. Yeah. I don't have a calculator on board in which I have some form of equation where I put in the speed, the thickness of my line, um, no, it's just a feeling. And the distance, I mean, it's just a feeling. I know when I make a throw like this, it's about 20 meters. And when I want to go deeper, I need to put like 25 or 30 meters out. But sometimes I want to fish more shallow. But I always keep in mind what we started with is that it's better to fish too shallow than too deep. So I want to be on the safe side. And if I think I'm going too deep, I always really in a bit more just to be safe and let it swim a bit higher. Another trick like Franz mentioned is when you put your baits deep enough, you will hit the bottom and you know how far you bait out. And it's just trial and error. You look at the depth sounder, you see what kind of depth you were fishing on at that time. And then you know, okay, I put 20 meters of line out with this particular bait, I'm hitting the bottom. Next time maybe I should put out 15 or 12 yeah. or 10. And that's how trial you and learn. error. That's how you learn. There is no exact science. Keep trying it keep experimenting with it and eventually you will get the feel of it and then you will know without thinking about it oh shit it's deeper now let's pull five, put out five meters extra and it doesn't matter if you put four yeah. or six it really doesn't and remember you've always got more rods when trolling that's so. the benefit of trolling yeah. yeah you can put more rods out yeah definitely when you want to get fish deeper because that's the question that we've been getting in winter time how do I get my baits at the right depth I mean how do bait fish are moving towards deeper water what's you know you were talking about big baits like this you have been fishing with these right yeah these ones and the ones from uh, from Balzer they are really really heavy baits made for sea fishing like uh, a halibut I guess yeah halibut and uh, so this is a, a, a 300 grams version Balzer has a 400 grams version and with really little speed, they go like this. If you don't go under two kilometers an hour, it will run. And it's really, really heavy. So you can fish it uh, slow trolling almost directly under the yeah. boat. So what happens then is when you troll it like that, you will fish with a, you know, depending on the line, of course, but let's say you fish with one of these lines. If you use a heavy bait like that, that the thickness of your line becomes less of an important factor because it's so heavy and the speed is low, you will generate an effect where your line will just go down like this. And you have uh, a certain advantage because you of course have your cone of the depth sounder, which is like this. And you can see the bait in your screen of the exactly. depth sounder. And of course, when this doesn't work or you just want to put shallow lures in deep water, you always have the little downrigger. Yep. Yeah. That's one other benefit of a downrigger yep. is that you have like a big metal ball, like this 300 gram bait, but then you have like a big metal ball which is up to a kilo, one and a half kilograms. Yeah. And then it goes straight down. Straight and you down. will see a line on your depth sounding, you will see the fish coming up and reacting it to it. But you will know that your bait is in the right right position, which is really helpful. Yeah. Yeah. And then it with the downrigger it, it, it becomes an exact science. Yeah. You know, well I got the I've got the bite at, at the eleven meters. Yeah. And one of the key features with a downrigger is you can put baits like these. Put them in front of a downrigger 
And normally these swim like two meters tops when you have yeah. like 0 0.32 uh, millimeters of line out a 0 0.32 millimeters thickness in your line and you put them like you know 30 or 40 meters behind the boat or behind the paravan and you will with a downrigger you can get them at like 10 meters 15 meters because the heavy ball of you know lead will just get it down towards 10 or 15 meters and then you will have all the other effects that we talked about all the other stuff that contributes to the swimming depth of your bait is cancelled due to the heavy weight of the uh, of the, uh, the the big metal wall that goes yep. down yeah if you don't want to use a downrigger and yeah. you don't want to use you can use these baits this one's uh, like service gear has these hemming sheds i wonder if like, some chinese guy in a factory actually putting the soft plastic on the jig hook that can't be a uh, you know a machine that's doing it it's perfectly aligned but if you don't <laughs> want to use these you know hemming sheds or anything you can also go for these heavy jig heads these are 90 gram jig heads. You can get them up to 150 grams. And you can get normal soft baits like this eel and just rig them up with a big heavy sinker, a big heavy jig head like this. And if you want to hook it properly like this Chinese guy there in the factory, there's one little key trick. You put the soft plastic against the jig head, you put your thumb like this, you mark it with the hook, and then you have like an exit hole on this side you push the soft bait over the jig hook, so push the soft bait over it, don't push it, like, until it comes close to the exit hook, and then you push it up like this, and then you will have it perfectly straight, not bent, not in a weird crooked way, but perfectly straight like this, and then you will fish it straight down like this, this will go quite deep, this is a 90 grams jig hat, this full swim, you know, you can reach six or seven meters easily with this one, yeah, especially at low speeds. And that's also one thing to keep in mind with baits. Curly tail baits, like this burbot or like this eel, require less speed than something that is like a swim bait, like this one. And that's because this tail needs little or no movement at all to generate some movement on its own. This is very popular to use with pelagic fishing as well because you can just hang, let it hang still and any bit of current or you know the least amount of movements from the bow will generate the tail moving and wiggling. For slow trolling, and with a slow trolling I mean slower than two kilometers an hour, this one is perfect. Yeah. Burbots are really good as well. Swim baits on the other hand, like these, are less effective. Yeah. They need to speed it up. 2.7, 2.5 for you. Yep. And yeah. that's most of the times in these colder months. Exactly. So in these colder months, either heavy baits like these, curly tails like this burble. I'm getting a lot of questions about this corner. This is like one of the only snowy leopard things that's <laughs> out there. So <laughs> collect this item. Or the heels. Yeah. yeah, thanks. I didn't see that. <laughs> <laughs> In the winter time, or in the, you know, when it gets to spring, I would switch back to the big swim baits. When the fish are more shallow or more active and they want to cross a bigger distance, they want to come from like six meters up towards the surface because it's warmer. The colder temperatures affect their activity as well. That's why you, fish, you want to fish closer to them in the winter, because in winter time they're not that active. So they need to be, you know, need to be presented an easy meal. Yeah. Yeah. You want, to, you want to pick it up size-wise because when you fish with a bigger lure, pike will put more effort in getting the lure than just a small. Exactly. Yeah. So that's it, I think. I think we covered yeah. the basics. Um, uh, we must have left uh, a lot of blanks. So please. This is this is like the bay. This is if you keep this in mind then you know this is all you need to know to, to effectively troll and determine what depth your bait is it's not an exact science it's impossible to determine if you are exactly at 4.33 centimeters no no you you want to have an estimation you can do a good estimation based on these principles so hope it helps out and uh, check us out in the next episode thanks yeah. guys bye